In this video, I want to compare first differences estimators with those of fixed effects estimators or equivalently least squares dummy variables because we need a way of deciding which type of technique to use. Well, it turns out if we're just considering a panel with two time periods that in fact there is no difference between these two different estimation strategies. First difference estimators are absolutely equivalent to those of fixed effects, so there's no need to worry about the difference. However, when t is greater than or equal to 3, so we've got three or more time periods, the first difference estimators are not equivalent to fixed effects estimators. So then we need to start to worry about the difference between these two types of estimators. Well, what sort of criteria can we use to evaluate these estimators? Well, under the assumptions that we have strict exogeneity, so that means that the error is not only uncorrelated with the explanatory variables in this time period, that it is also un uncorrelated with the future values of the explanatory variables, uh, and also assuming that we have a random sample in our cross-section and finally assuming that we have some sort of variance in variables across time then it turns out that both the fixed effects and the first differences estimators are unbiased so the expectation of the first difference estimator beta hat fd is equal to the true population parameter beta and the expectation of the fixed effects estimator beta hat fe is also equal to beta. So they're both unbiased. So we can't use unbiasedness as a criteria to decide whether to use first differences or fixed effects. Under the same assumptions and even ones which are slightly less restrictive, the first differences estimator is consistent. And similarly is the fixed effects estimator. So they're both consistent, which means that in this context, we're talking about circumstances where n tends to infinity. So we need another criteria to compare these two particular estimators. The criteria that we actually can use is to look at their relative efficiency. And it turns out that their relative efficiency depends on whether we have serially uncorrelated errors in our original model. So our original model, before we do any sort of transformations, is we have the house price in city i at time t is equal to beta 1 times the crime rate in city i at time t plus beta 2 times the unemployment rate in city i at time t. And then finally we have this unobserved heterogeneity term alpha i and our idiosyncratic error uit. If we assume that for this particular idiosyncratic error we have here, that they are serially uncorrelated. So that means that they are correlated, uh, not correlated across time because we don't have to worry about them being correlated across city because we have assumed that we have a random sample in our cross section. Then we can write that the covariance of UIT with UIT minus one has to be equal to zero. Okay, and then if we write down our first differences estimated sort of transform system, we have that the first difference of house prices is equal to beta 1 times the first difference in crime rate plus beta 2 times the first difference in unemployment rate. And by taking the first difference, we've actually removed this unobserved heterogeneity. So we're just left with the first difference of this error term here. And for first differences estimation to be efficient, we require that this first difference of errors is serially uncorrelated. Well, is that necessarily going to be the case if we've assumed that the covariance between UIT and UIT minus 1 is equal to 0? Well, actually, it turns out that if we write the covariance of UIT, or the first difference of UIT rather, with the first difference of UIT minus 1, we can replace this with the definitions of both of these things. So the first difference of UIT is UIT minus UIT minus 1 with UIT minus 1 minus UIT minus 2. 
And this isn't going to be zero because of the fact that the only terms we have to worry about in this covariance are the ui t minus ones because they appear on both sides of this comma here. And it turns out that the covariance in the circumstance where they the original error was serially uncorrelated is minus the variance of the original idiosyncratic error. Or another way of writing this is that if we have no serial correlation between the errors in our original model, then the correlation between the first differences of the errors and the first differences length of the error is equal to minus 0.5. And because we have this serial correlation in our first differences system, and it turns out in circumstances where we have serially uncorrelated idiosyncratic error in our original model, that the standard error of beta hat fixed effects is less than the standard error of beta hat first differences. So in those circumstances where we have serially uncorrelated idiosyncratic error, first uh, fixed effects rather, is better than first differences.